Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel. Information Briefcase. Today we're going to learn about why aliens should never be contacted. The truth. Now, let's begin. The universe is amazingly huge and appears to be loaded with potential for life with billions of tenable planets. Assuming if we develop our technology to go between the stars at only 0.1% of the speed of light, it could colonize our universe in about 100 million years. Which is not a long time given the billions of years the Milky Way has existed. So this will enable migration of humans to spread our civilization to majority of the galaxies in our universe. But till now we can't see anything, hear anything, the universe appears to be vacuum. This vacuum space of the universe we think it is we describe this as Fermi paradox. Faced with the apparently vacant universe, humankind faces a confusion. We are desperately curious to know whether we are alone in this huge Milky Way galaxy. For many years we have been trying to call out and reveal ourselves to alien civilizations. However, this could be wrong and we are working towards our own extinction without knowing. Perhaps the universe isn't vacant. Possibly it's brimming with alien civilization, but they are hiding away from one another. Due to their previous bad experience of war between different types of aliens. Let's explain this theory of Fermi paradox with a survival example. The human instant and way of life. Let's imagine a situation where a person gets involved in an airplane crash. He falls into the ocean somehow alive with his survival kit. After a long struggle he reaches land, but becomes unconscious alone in a deserted island. The person wakes up after a period of time immediately his human instinct kicks in. And he listens cautiously to any noises or lights carefully before making his move. He looks ahead to see a fog-covered dark forest which is really creepy. He spends his night alone without any incidents in the foggy and creepy woods. The next morning he considers shouting to others to end his loneliness but stops himself. Even we are human beings we are also one of the animals in this planet, we too have animal instincts. All living things look to survive, use resources and reproduce. Their biggest problems are other living things that share similar survival instincts. Fighting between species for survival always goes in favor to beings with advantageous qualities. Our ancestors were imaginative, competitive, expansionist and eager for assets. These qualities in human beings made them winning the leadership of our planet. Today, most of the creatures are so absolutely at our mercy. Humans accidentally clearly wipes out around 12 species every day. However, humans are not singled out individuals. They developed societies and straighted to fight among themselves. Competitive and expansionary societies spread quicker and bigger. They may merge different societies together or fight among themselves and destroy each other. If we check out our history of evolution from the beginning, it turns out to be clear we are dangerous to others but also to ourselves. Our human instinct has driven us to take control over all edges of our planet and soon we will look to the stars both to grow our area and grow our resources. But other universal species are also attempting to do exactly the same thing. Almost certainly, the surviving race of life also going on far away planets, so we should accept that an alien species that came to overwhelm their planet would be in certain respects like us. However, assuming they are like us, they are also dangerous. Now let's get back to our story chapter 2 the implication. When the survivor walked alone through the fog-filled forest, he realizes that there may be others in this island. He doesn't have a clue about how they will react, whether they will welcome him or kill him. The survivor realizes his situation and decides that he will kill anyone if he is attacked. He also knows that he needs to accept that they would do the same to safeguard themselves. Also he clearly knows that the person who makes the first attack can win. But even if he is thinking all about fighting, he also knows that fighting can also be avoided. Up to this point the advancement of the modern world have created more peace compared to violence. Possibly this is valid for other alien civilizations as well, they too have reached to a more peaceful way of life and less clash. Different alien civilizations can have a complete opposite civilization situation. They might have went from being very peaceful to great wars due to development. Let us assume we meet an alien spaceship in our airspace suddenly. We have no chance of telling whether they have come in peace or war and what their actual goals are, why they have come to our galaxy. Likewise, they too won't understand our languages or trust our intentions. Even if we let them know that we are peaceful and not ready for a war. What's more, assuming we found aliens and they also found us, the light years between us would mean years of communication delay. 
the two sides would be in a condition of vulnerability, wondering whether the advisable move is to simply assault, since there's another significant issue, war technology and first strike advantage. We don't have the foggiest idea about how powerful their weapon systems are. We do realize how much weapon technology advancement matters in war. Two or three hundred or thousand years can transform war. With unsure outcomes into an one-sided slaughter, Caesar's armies would have no potential for success. Against Napoleon's military with their guns and cannons. If guns and cannons were used against Caesar's army in the First World War. But those guns and cannons will not stand a chance against today's drones and missiles. So the power level of various civilizations might change hugely. So saying a hi to unknown alien civilization and inviting them to Earth. Without knowing about their advancement and weapon technology. Will only make us a victim miserably if we are behind on the technology. Also the idea of interstellar clash makes this more worse. Your rival is light years away in the universe, sending an attacking fleet. Takes such a long time that when they arrive for the battle it may be hopeless. Thus, battle between civilizations might cause more danger to ourselves. From another perspective, if they are scared of us, they might decide to attack us first. So the only option is to strike them with such power and speed. That the enemy gets no opportunity of survival or time to attack us back or escape to look for revenge later. The stakes are really high in this issue so there is no room for error. Assuming that most of alien population live on planet's surface. Like we humans do on Earth and they are not constantly moving in spaceships. Then that leaves them pretty vulnerable similar to us. So the plan is to simply toss something enormous at a planet to make it dead. So a super interplanetary weapon is presumably something like a relativistic kill vehicle. A rocket shot at a planet for a critical portion of the speed of light. For instance, a rocket the size of an individual going 95% the speed of light. Has as much energy as all nuclear bombs on the planet. If you shot two or three dozen nuclear bombs at the alien civilization, victory would be genuinely sure even a single hit would do the trick. This isn't that silly of a thought of progress. Just marginally above us on the Kardashev scale. Would have sufficient energy to send numerous strikes against each planet it suspects of holding life. What makes these weapons so powerful is the amount they favor a first strike, since they would be quick that it very well may be difficult to ensure yourself viably against them whenever they're dispatched. War between human and alien civilizations may not be long war. However fast one brings home all the glory circumstances, where the first to shoot wins. What's more assuming each civilization is an existential threat to each other, there might be just two sorts of civilizations out there calm ones and deadly ones. So how would it be advisable for us to respond, so should we worry? It is stupid to think that still aliens have not noticed humans yet. The radio transmissions we've sent over 100 years traveled a tiny distance and have disappeared long time ago rotted into this vast universe. At our present technology, assuming we don't effectively attempt to get noticed. If that no one explicitly takes a look at our solar system we will stay hidden. Yet, one day we will wander into space seriously and need to consider these sorts of questions once more. We couldn't say whether there are others or we are going through the dark woods alone. Yet, we have no chance of knowing for sure. For now it appears to be everything we can manage is to carefully listen. Also if we see others steeping outside and reveal themselves from hiding. We should not react immediately, however cautiously watch them hiding yourself. Maybe we are overthinking about this all wrong by permitting our crude mind that advanced with regards to the horrifying competition of life to create unwanted fears of ruthless aliens surrounding us. Possibly the way that we are taking a look at the universe like this is a sign that we are still not growing up as a species. There could be a friendly, inviting community of alien civilization waiting to hear from us when we are prepared. The assuring news is in our present situation is that there is actually very little we really want to do. We simply should be smart with regards about the signals we send into the space. We really want to observe our outer space and learn a lot about our galaxy. Outer space can be compared to our dark fog filled woods in our story. Since whatever the nature of dark woods is loaded with risks or welcoming strangers or nobody we need to just cautiously observe the woods can tell the truth. So we should do that. Finally the survivor comes out of hiding and settles down comfortably. Gradually the sun dissolves the fog away, revealing the dark forest into a beautiful nature. But suddenly he came eye to eye contact with tribal hunter. Frozen in fear both stand surprised looking at each other for a moment. 
His brain is dashing, thinking about every one of the various choices. The survivor takes a full breath and settles on a choice. Maybe the only way out of this dark woods is to come out of the hitting together. Likewise if we come across alien civilization by any luck. We should analyze the situation and settle on a choice whether to go for peace or war. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe like share and comment below. Please press the bell button to get notification.